We kind of dismantled the waiver wire last week. Title of the video, Week 7 Waiver was for your idiot league mates. Let them make the moves. There's a lot of shiny objects, the Jordan Masons, the Elijah Mitchells, the Zach Evanses. At the top of the list, we told y'all to hit Kareem Hunt. Now, Kareem Hunt did get hit. Now, he's a little bit questionable, maybe banged up, but he would be the number one waiver wire pickup this week, considering Jerome Ford's high ankle sprain. But there are plenty more players to talk about. We've got a yap for a minute because we've got a couple guys that I would spend a lot of fab dollars on going into week eight. So this is the week eight waiver wire video. Now we might be talking football here, but you do not need to know basketball. Opening night happening very soon. This week, in fact. And Underdog has an absolutely free line on LeBron James. 0.5 points. Again, you don't need to know basketball to know that he's going over 0.5 points. So they've got a free square for you on the app. Underdog Fantasy. Link in the description. You can go to underdogfantasy.com. You could download the app. If you click the link, it'll take you right to the app store. When you deposit for the first time, $10 all the way up to $500, I think they double your deposit. A lot of free money for you there. Use promo code BDGE. That is how you double it, all right? If you slot that code right there, BDGE, into the code spot, they're going to double whatever you deposit. Then you can throw it all on LeBron James, 0.5. Actually, there's a max number. You could obviously bet on that. But 0.5, free square, free money, free for you. Let's jump into some players that will not be free for you on the waiver wire this week. Y'all know we got to tuck our shirts in. Is this not the sexiest jersey of all time? As always with these videos, we're going to jump into the sleeper trending tab. So hopefully this covers basically everybody that... Uh, is imaginable in any league type. We'll talk about the fab suggestions. We'll talk about whether or not we want to use the number one waiver wire on it. We've also got that information readily available to y'all on bdge.co. If you are a big dog member, you've got our waiver wire rankings broken down by position as well as flex. We've got quarterbacks. we got defensive streamers, all that kind of shit. We've got our weekly rankings up there too. Only place to get those bad boys. bdge.co is where you scrounge those up. Every Saturday, we do a private live stream, Q and Assault, where y'all can assault me with any sit-start questions you have, available only to the big dog members. Let's look at this list. Now, we've got some tight ends that kind of uh, take the cake here. Dalton Kincaid is the obvious number one pickup at the tight end position because not only did he have his breakout where he went 8 for 75, we've been waiting for that game from him, but the bigger news is Dawson Knox opted for wrist surgery. So he is out indefinitely. Now, what that does is it starts to condense the target share there. It's going to be Diggs. It's going to be Kincaid. It's going to be a little bit of Gabe Davis. In the same way that like we were excited for Rashi Rice because Justin Watson went out, not because we think Watson's some like player that you can't overcome and jump in the depth chart, but because he was playing way too many snaps. The same thing with Dawson Knox. It was one of the concerns that people who did not like Dalton Kincaid his rookie year was because Dawson Knox was naturally just going to get some playtime and get in the red zone and get targets that no one needed him to get targets. And now that he's out, Dalton Kincaid pretty much becomes a very high floor player, in my opinion. So Kincaid would be the number one tight end pickup this week. He's not my number one overall player to pick up on the waiver wire this week, but he is uh, an absolute must add if you are desperate at the tight end position and he is unowned. Obviously, he's owned in 41% of leagues, so I don't expect him to be super available. Although this is a tight end premium league that I'm showing you the trending chart for. So this is the guy that if I needed a tight end, I have Dallas Goddard, but maybe in a flex pinch, I would probably drop some serious money on. So I will consider doing that with Mr. Dalton Kincaid. Taysom Hill's another dude who he is playing 60% of the snaps for New Orleans, okay? They have gone identity lists. They do not have an identity on offense besides chucking the ball to Alvin Kamara five yards away from the line of scrimmage or five yards behind the line of scrimmage. So with them being identity lists, they've kind of transformed back into what they've been in recent years when they've been identity lists, and that becomes the Taysom Hill Saints. The Saints of Taysom Hill. That's like the name of a fucking terrible movie right there, and Taysom Hill is the star of it. So he is running routes. He is getting handoffs. He's playing 60% of the snaps. He is so versatile that they just scheme ways to get him open. He's another dude that I would I would spend some serious money on if I needed a tight end because we're seeing it week over week now where he is a real part of this offense with Jawan Johnson continuing to be sidelined. So Taysom Mill is another dude that I would drop like for Kincaid, I would go up to like 20, 25% if you needed a tight end, maybe even more than that. I, I think he could be uh, an actual weak changer with big games down the stretch. Taysom Hill, another dude that obviously he'll come with his inconsistencies, but 
I would I would drop some serious penny on him if it was a PPR league, if it was some side uh some sort of like tight end premium league, because he'll 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 score some touchdowns down the way. You can use him in your tight end slot, obviously. He'll throw the ball, he'll run the ball, he'll do all of that stuff. So he's a 10, 10 percent, fifteen percent guy for sure if you need a tight end. Now the running back position, that's always the the juiciest position to talk about. We've got Darrell Henderson at the top of the list, obviously. He comes off a game where he had 20 opportunities, right? It was Kyron Williams' first game on the IR. Darrell Henderson was used running routes. He was used more often than Royce Freeman by a, a relatively large margin, 18 to 12 in terms of carries. And I expect that role to be the same, if not even grow a little bit more, because Freeman's a lot less uh, versatile than Darrell Henderson. Now, I will say that because it is a committee here, the ceiling is capped, right? And we don't know who's going to score the touchdowns on a given week. We don't know if they're going to score the touchdowns because they also don't throw the ball to their running back. So Rell Henderson, he definitely needs to be owned, and he's definitely the top running back pickup of the week. But I will say 57% of the snaps, they play at Dallas. They also have the bye week coming up. Green Bay, Seattle, Arizona are nice matchups, but Dallas is a tough matchup this week, obviously. Rell Henderson's a dude that, you know, if you need a running back, um, he is going to be super involved in this offense. He obviously has a history with McVay, which I don't know if it's actually great history. We've shown, uh, we've seen a lot of not confidence. What's the opposite of confidence? We've seen a lack of trust from McVay to Darrell Henderson. So any given week that that kind of pops up, won't be surprised. But it is a very clear two-man committee between him and Royce Freeman. You obviously want Darrell Henderson because he's doing all the valuable work in this offense, and he looks relatively fucking good for a dude who hasn't really played at all this year. So Darrell Henderson's another dude that I would use the number one waiver wire on him. I would probably pick him up over Kincaid, uh, depending on what your team needs and depending on the scoring format, Kincaid in the tight end premium, I'm definitely, you know, raising the ropes there. Kyron Williams will be back this year. I actually think he's low key a buy low candidate for teams that are, I mean, if you're seven and six and one, even five and two, I think when Kyron comes back, this is his job again. I think he's going to be the workhorse there. McVay trusts him. So I, I would go send some low ball offers for Kyron Williams and see what you can grab and put him onto your IR. But Darrell Henderson's obviously the pickup this week at running back. Going down the running back list, Amari DiMercato, here's the thing. We just kind of kind of get over it, right? He let us down two weeks ago, but now he's put in back-to-back -back games where he has been the guy who's gotten the most snaps. 43% last week was bad, but that shit shot up to 80% this week, okay? So they're kind of telling us what's going on here. Unfortunately, they do play Baltimore next week, which is a very tough run defense. Then they play at Cleveland, which is a really, really tough run defense. Atlanta is low-key, a very, very tough run defense as well. So we have three tough matchups. He is the pass catcher in this backfield, so I'm not going to overspend. I do think he is absolutely startable. There are no teams on buys in this upcoming week, but I do think that because we have seen him kind of like become the guy in this backfield. Uh, Keontae Ingram, I think, had like zero touches last week. He's at the top of the drop list. We will go through the drop list. Yep, didn't play at all. So I think this uh, backfield is really, really like dwindled, and Amari DeMarcado is the guy back there. Again, good pass catcher, but like the weekly ceiling is terrible. James Conner will be back eventually, so I probably wouldn't throw anything more than like, I don't know, in the 5 to 8, maybe upwards of 10% if you're super desperate at the running back position. Gus Edwards, highly owned. Uh, Kareem Hunt's highly owned. Pierre Strong is the other guy in this Cleveland backfield. Now, we have Jerome Ford dealing with a high ankle sprain. Now, apparently, it's like a minor high ankle sprain. I don't really know what that means. They're saying he's going to miss probably one to two weeks. On average, this takes players out for like three to four weeks. I ain't a doctor only technically, so I'm not really going to speak to that. He's going to be out for multiple weeks. Maybe even put on the IR. We'll have to see. Kareem Hunt kind of left this game banged up, but apparently it's not serious. He's expected to serve as a starting running back in week eight against the Seahawks. Now, he's not been great from an efficiency standpoint. As you can see, he's played in four games. His yards per carry total is 2.6, 2.4, 3.9, 3.1. 9, but where he is being used is in the passing game and especially noticeable on the goal line. This is a relatively good Cleveland offense that scores a lot of points, okay? And that is a running back that you want on your team because he's getting all the goal line work here. Three touchdowns over the last two games. Kareem Hunt will be a pretty rock-solid RB2 going forward with pass-catching abilities. Obviously super familiar with the offense. I, I don't think they really want to use Pierre Strong that much, but they will use him in a breather back, in and out kind of role. And if Kareem Hunt maybe re-injures uh, the injury that he left the game with for a little bit, then maybe Pierre Strong becomes a bigger part of the offense. But I do think that uh, we have heard one name kind of floated around the trade rumor market, and that is Dalvin Cook. For all the hoopla about him being such a big piece to be added to the Jets offense this offseason. And don't bring that back to me. I was just the one who broke the news. I wasn't excited about it. I could care less for, for it as it relates to fantasy football. Delvin Cook's name is being floated around. He's been connected to two teams. One of them is the Cleveland Browns. The other one is the... What fucking team was it? 
Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That was the other team. Cleveland Browns would be interesting. He did uh, play under Kevin Stefanski, so he would understand the offense. And he's kind of just like a Kareem Hunt at this point in his career, I think. Dalvin Cook's been terrible, so I'm not like excited about adding Dalvin Cook or anything like that. But I think it should be noted. I also think low-key. The other team, I have not heard anything about this, but I would like to put it on record. Would not be surprised if Buffalo Bills got back in the Dalvin Cook uh, sweepstakes, if you can even call it that at this point, because they were very much in it during the summer, and now they get him for a ridiculously uh, cheap disc. Actually, no, it wouldn't even be a discount because they still do have to pay him. Hmm. They wanted him in the summer, and I'm not really sure how the contract situation would work if he got traded, if the Jets would have to eat that contract, but I'd imagine that they probably get it at a relatively severe discount and you know Damian Harris is hurt so they might need another guy I'm sure James Cook would be fucking ecstatic to play with his brother so I'd keep my eye on the Buffalo Bills as well for Dalvin Cook but I'm just bringing that shit up for no reason uh Pierre Strong's a guy that should be rostered but he's unstartable right now he's kind of just like a wait and see what happens with Kareem Hunt Josh Kelly no I'm not doing that again I'm not doing that shit again Devin Singletary is an interesting one because Devin Singletary outsnapped and outproduced Damian Pierce before their bye week I have no idea what's going to happen after their bye week. I don't know if that was just kind of like a hot hand thing. I don't know if that was whatever it was. And the Texans offensive line should be getting a little bit more healthy by the week. And they should be getting some starters back post by. So maybe Pierce performs better. But I don't know. It's just something to kind of keep an eye on. I definitely think Devin Singletary is worth rostering. And, you know, you should probably scoop him up for about 5% of the fab bid if possible. Same thing with Royce Freeman. I, I don't expect him to really be a huge factor in this offense. And Darrell Henderson is the guy that you obviously – want to have on your team but I think Royce Freeman is absolutely worth uh rostering for a low fab bid Tajay Spears if he is somehow still available on your waiver wire he has played 50 percent of the snaps for the Titans this year um it's possible that Derrick Henry gets moved by the trade deadline I mm, I don't know if I believe it I wouldn't really put money on it but if he does Tajay Spears becomes like a top 15 every week running back and he's a dude that you can kind of play right now if you're in PPR leagues I think that's the way I'm looking at the running back position as it relates to the waiver wire this week. It's a clear like Darrell Henderson and Zeke is probably highly owned. I don't see him on the list, but Zeke actually took a season high 50% of the rush attempts in week seven and also got all of the carries on the goal line. All the inside the five goal line carries went to Zeke. So we could see a very clear split where Zeke is getting most of the early down work and Ramondre continues to get more and more involved in the passing game for the Patriots. So he's available. I think he's a, a pretty decent fucking add too. Moving over to the wide receivers. Now, when I do my waiver wire rankings, right, the ones, again, that you could find on bdge.co, if you are a Big Dog member, Fantasy Pros puts a a list of players that they think are all of the relevant players for the waiver wire that week. And sometimes they put players that are like relatively highly owned. I think they pull in their numbers maybe from like Yahoo or ESPN or something like that. So a lot of times those guys will be lesser owned than on Sleeper because Sleeper is definitely uh, full of guys who play a lot more or a lot more active in fantasy leagues, right? You join Sleepers just to play them shits. Whereas like Yahoo, ESPN people leave in like fucking two weeks. But at the top of the list, they have dudes like Josh Downs. They have dudes like Tank Dell. Um, so if those guys are available, they're no brainers. You're like blowing your fab on them. Josh Downs is in the midst of a pure breakout. He's averaging 17.4 PPR fantasy points per game over his last three. Him and Minshew have uh, developed a really, really nice chemistry. Tank Dell is obviously just a top fucking popper. He is a top popper that you want on your team. Again, I don't think any of those guys will be available in serious leagues, but you blow the budget on them. The other guy I want to talk about was Jaden Reed, who is very much at the top of my list because Christian Watson. Now, I've heard I've heard multiple things. One, um, Christian Watson's injury, from what I've gathered over the last day or two, looked more serious than it actually probably is. Uh, apparently, he kind of just like fell down on the sideline dramatically because he didn't want his team to blow a timeout. So he kind of just like ran off. He was hurt, right? And he normally would have just laid down, but he hopped off the side of the field so that his team didn't have to use a timeout and then kind of just went onto the floor. So apparently it might not be as serious as we expect. I don't know if we've heard anything about his MRIs yet, but I wouldn't overreact to the Christian Watson injury just yet. That being said, though, him and Musgrave both got banged up. Musgrave got his head absolutely rattled, but he's on the injury report with an ankle. So I'm not sure what his deal is, but if those two are out, Jaden Reed and Romeo Dobbs, who I'm sure is mostly highly owned, Jaden Reed is the more rosterable dude, I'm assuming, from waiver wires that you should probably be blowing a decent amount of fab on in PPR leagues because he actually leads the team in target share when those guys are not on the field. Then we have a decent sample size of Christian Watson off the field. He has like a 
20 to 25% target share. And he's a really talented player. He fits into that Josh Downs mold. So Jaden Reed, if Christian Watson does miss time, is a really, really good pickup that's probably available. What other wide receivers we got? Jake Bobo looked fucking great. I do think DK Metcalf probably returns this week, though. Kendrick Bourne has looked good as this New England Patriots offense has looked good. When they don't look good, he doesn't do shit. So I don't want to overreact because we already did this in week one. But they do play Miami. There should be a lot of points scored in that one. I like Kendrick Bourne a little bit. Not going overboard because he is soon to disappoint everybody, obviously. So he's cool. You got to be desperate as shit to go to Demario Douglas. Rashi Rice should be highly owned. Juwan Jennings is a nice, like, high floor player as uh, as Debo continues to miss time. And I think that should be at least another week. So Jawan Jennings is like the clear wide receiver two behind Ayuk there. So he's not a bad pickup in PPR league. Same thing with Brandon Powell. He's been kind of a staple of that passing offense with Justin Jefferson out. So PPR leagues will probably give you, you know, anywhere from like eight to 10 points. As you can see, nine, five, 11, that's where he'll land. He's not a high ceiling player, but he's got a decent floor if you're desperate. Again, no bye weeks this week. So you probably don't need to use guys like Brandon Powell in your lineup, but they will become a bike. When we flip over to the opposite side of things, the, the drop list, I'll just go quickly down the list and I'll point out any players that I would not drop. If I don't point them out, then you can assume that I would be fine with you dropping them. Sam Howell, I think, should be owned. He has way more good starts than he has bad starts this year. And you're just going to take the good with the bad. There are going to be weeks where he puts up dud games, but more often than not, I mean, look, like obviously 16 negative three, eight, bad. But if you look at the points in which he was sandwiched in between those games, 25, 21, 28, 24, and this might be a six point per passing touchdown league, but regardless, like, you know, take a couple points off each of those. Those are extremely usable weeks. And they have a stretch where they get Seattle, the Giants, Dallas is tough, obviously, but Miami, the Rams, like you, you have a few games in there that you could absolutely start that man. Mitchell, I would probably continue to hold just as a handcuff to C-Mac, but C-Mac's clearly uh, very, very fine. Michael Mayer, I would probably hold as well. I know we saw his uh, snaps kind of decrease a little bit last week and didn't have a breakout game, but wait till Jimmy G is back. Detroit Sneaky is the absolute worst fantasy team against tight ends, which you wouldn't expect, but they are number one in terms of fantasy points allowed. They got ripped up by Mark Andrews, unsurprisingly, but he's a dude that I would hold on to. Johnny Smith is a, the tight end 10 right now in fantasy. He is the tight end 10 right now. Revenge game narrative against Tennessee coming. Him and, oh, Arthur Smith and Jonu Smith. Revenge game against Tennessee. We're popping for 70. No doubt a fucking about it. He is not a gadget player. He is a guy scoring fantasy points, and he's a guy that is absolutely like a, a, a player in this offense. The Atlanta Falcons target the tight ends on 37.1% of their throws. Number one in the league by far. It's not even close. The next closest team is at like 35 point five percent it is insane Royce like I said I would hold on to Jaleel McLaughlin I would hold on to KJ Osborne I would definitely hold on to Jameson Williams actually you know I won't even like some of these guys are like 65 percent so that feels like you guys know not to drop them Wandell I would probably hold on to as well I think he just had a bad game but he still got a high floor in PPR leagues Matt Stafford I uh, would definitely hold on to I know they got a tough game against Dallas so maybe we're not starting him but uh, definitely would not be dropping him. Latavius Murray is a dude that I would probably like to hold on to because the backfield has converged into an absolute just like two-player split between him and James Cook. You obviously kind of need a touchdown for him to be relevant whatsoever, but I still think he's worth holding on to. Same thing with Logan Thomas. He's still being used in the passing game heavily. Michael Wilson, I really, really want to fucking see him with Kyler Murray on the field, man. I really want to see Michael Wilson and Hollywood Brown rip it up together, but that would mean you have to hold on for another couple of weeks, and he's too inconsistent to put into your lineup, unfortunately. Josh Reynolds is the other guy that I would definitely hold on to. He is a, a very real part of this passing offense, and they just had a really shitty week against Baltimore, but they play the Raiders, which could be a nice bounce back game. He's a high floor, not necessarily a high ceiling kind of guy, but I still like Josh Reynolds a lot. So if you want the full detailed recap of everybody that I like, how much fab I would spend on them, whether or not I would use the number one waiver wire priority on them and just my rankings in general, head over to bdge.co. Sign up to be a Big Dog member. You'll get our weekly rankings, our waiver wire rankings, access to our private Q and Assault every Saturday where I'm answering your questions for your lineups or trades, whatever questions you may have for me. All right, that's it for Week 8 Waiver Wire. See you tomorrow morning for our Trade Target video. Make sure you subscribe to see that and turn notifications on so you know when it goes live. I'm out of here. Oh, my God.